Hey guys, Brian with Thunder Laser USA here. Hey, um, I was looking through a forum and they were talking about speed and doing smaller letters and stuff. Um, anyway, I, I went off on a tangent and was talking about uh, the scanning offset adjustment values and stuff you can enter in to help with backlash. And I thought I would do a short uh, little video because this will be good for everyone uh, about scanning offset adjustment in Lightburn or in uh, RD Works. It's reverse compensation setting. Um, so when the thunder lasers come from the factory, uh, they go ahead and figure out what your values are. And these values are specific to, to the, your machine or the machine that, that this shipped with. And these values change over time as belts get looser, as bearings break in, uh, as you know the wear in and break in process, all of that stuff. Um, the environment can have an effect. If you don't clean it uh, you know and maintain it properly it can start to bind a little bit you know enough to make a difference and because these belts are spongy you know um, there's they flap and, and and there's some mechanical backlash that goes on here that you can't engineer out of the system the way it is that's just the nature of the beast uh, with a gantry system and there's a good article uh, in the forum but I wanted to show you uh, but this is basically what scanning offset adjustment does. When this rasters, you see how the lines can be offset. And that's because the belt stretches uh, or the head moves more in one direction than it does the other because of belt stretch or, or whatever. And you can input some values into Lightburn to help compensate for this uh, phenomenon, this anomaly that happens. You can see some differences with some different settings here. And uh, that's basically what it is. So like I was saying... Uh, all the thunder lasers come with uh, a card that already has the settings on it as they were done you know uh, in a final quality check they do this at the very last before they box up the machine so what you'll do is go into lightburn and enter these values or if you're using rd works there's a place in there to do that too now one thing to pay attention to uh, is you got 200 millimeters per second 400 600 800 then you have one meter per second that is not one millimeter per second so you don't want to enter a one you want to enter a one and three zeros because it's a thousand millimeters per second. So just keep that in mind or you'll get some some wonky stuff going on. So let's go into Lightburn. And uh, if you go up here to your uh, uh, device settings and click it, you'll see that you have scanning offset adjustment here. And I have a value in here, but that's totally useless. So let's pull this uh, over here a little bit and we'll bring this back down so we can see and I bet you I, I don't know if this will stay up I think every time I click here it's gonna go in the background so let me see if I can do something here Ah, okay well you saw the card I'm gonna drag it over to my other window and just get them entered but I'm gonna show you how so it's it's defaulted off um, because the values that go here are specific to your laser and your laser only you can't share these values with anyone um, because they're specific to the parts and the, and the personality and the DNA of your machine. So the first one I have is 200 millimeters per second. So I'm just going to click add and we're going to make this 200 millimeters per second. And you're going to enter that value in the line shift. And mine says 0 0.07, so I'm going to enter that. Initial offset, you leave that at zero for all intents and purposes. Um, there isn't a reason for that, uh, but typically you don't need to worry about that as far as I know. Not right now anyway. So you'll hit OK. Now you have your first value. So now you'll just add the second one. So we'll do 400. And the line shift on that was 0.085. Now we have that one and it may round. And that's fine. The, the software knows what it's doing. So we'll go 600. And my value for that is 0.145. And we'll add 800. And it is 0.17. And finally, remember, 1,000. Here's another thing I need to tell you about, too, and I'll show you. 1,000 millimeters per second. Don't put just the 1. And my value for that is 0.19. And now they're entered. Now, it still won't work because I haven't enabled it. So after you enter these values in, you want to uh, enable it. Now, what you can do is go in here, turn it off, send a job to the laser, uh, an engraving job, something with some detail in it and stuff like that, um, or, or a box even, that's what everybody uses, and um, to test with, and then turn it on and do another one and, and see if you notice a difference. 
So another important thing, if you work in inches, and I always forget to mention this because I hardly ever work in inches, but if you're in inches, and you can toggle that right up here, if you didn't know that, just by clicking, uh, and we go back into those settings, I'm going to go add a value. It's Now it's in inches, so you need to be very careful because the values that come with Thunder Laser, these are, these are metric. These are not imperial measurements, okay? So... You need to make sure that you're in millimeter uh, conversion before you enter these offsets. Now it will it will they'll change because now if you look at the ones, whoa, no it didn't. Well it did. Okay, see it converts, um, but it looks like it rounds or something too. So it will convert them, but just make sure you're not in inches when you enter them, or they'll be completely completely messed up so I just wanted to show you that and um, give it a try see what you think see if you get better results now the other thing is is um, we need to go back to um, Did I, welcome to Matt's workshop. a link here and there is uh, this Lightburn forum uh, uh, and there's links in here and it even shows you how to do it and I think it's in uh, Lightburn's documentation as well on how to generate your own uh, offset values these these settings let's say you replace a belt or change a head or you have to take something apart and put it back together it's a good idea to verify these because they may have changed uh, ever so little but it doesn't take much uh, b because of the precision so you know if you do anything mechanical to it it's probably a good idea to regenerate these values and uh, I'll put some links and things like that uh, in the description on where you can find resources for that. Uh, I think that's all I got. Until next time, have a good evening.